Hi guys and welcome back to another video. My name is Courtney if you don't know me already and I am from New Zealand. So on my channel I reacted to the tomb of the unknown soldiers in Arlington and I had no idea what it was before I watched it but it got recommended to me so I did give it a watch and it was really mesmerizing. Um, and I've learned a little bit about, you know, the significance about it and the meaning behind it and kind of why it's there. So all the stuff that I've learned is from the comments of the people who wrote down below and I, I learned a lot. I had no idea what it was before that. But um, someone has sent me this video and it's the story of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. So I'm guessing it's like the history behind it. So I thought it would be a cool video to watch and you can see me learn about this tradition and this uh, and the meaning behind it. Um, of course, it's a very sentimental place and it's a very important place and just, you know, obviously what it represents is huge. It's huge. You know, it's all about the soldiers who, you know, who might not have even been brought home, you know, who, who were just left out there because they couldn't get them home. This is for them. So, um, yeah, so let's get into the video. Um, yeah, let's do it. It's 12 minutes long, by the way. Not every soldier is recognized for his heroic actions. Indeed, one of the countless tragedies of war is that the bodies of many soldiers are never even identified. That's so sad, eh? On August 3rd, 1956, three years after the end of the Korean War, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a bill to select and pay tribute to the unknown soldiers of the Korean War and World War II. These soldiers would be buried in the Tomb of the Unknowns at Arlington National Cemetery. The Tomb of the Unknowns was created in response to the mass casualties of World War I. The idea of honoring the unknown dead, of which there were so many in World War I, began in Great Britain in 1920. Then, in March 1921, the U.S. Congress approved a plan to return the body of an unknown American soldier from the war and bury him with full honors in a tomb to be constructed at the Memorial Amphitheater in Arlington National Cemetery. On Memorial Day, 1921, four unknown soldiers were exhumed from four World War I American cemeteries in France. They were placed in four identical caskets and set before a highly decorated veteran of that war, U.S. Army Sergeant Edward F. Younger. Sergeant Younger ceremonially selected one casket. He later spoke of his decision. I was left alone in the chapel. There were four coffins, all unmarked and unnamed. The one that I placed the roses on would be the one brought home and placed in the National Shrine. I walked around the coffins three times. Then suddenly I stopped. What caused me to stop, I don't know. It was as though something had pulled me I placed the roses on the coffin in front of me. I can still remember the odd feeling that I had standing there alone. The chosen unknown was transported to the United States aboard the USS Olympia. Those remaining were interred in the Meuse Argonne Cemetery, France. So the selected unknown so lay in state at the Capitol Rotunda until midnight on November 10th, 1921. On November 11th, Armistice Day, the casket of that unknown soldier was carried from the Rotunda to Arlington National Cemetery under a military escort. Oh. Behind the caisson bearing the flag-draped casket walked President Harding, Vice President Coolidge, Chief Justice Taft, 
and the other justices of the Supreme Court, members of the Cabinet, Senate, and House of Representatives, generals and other distinguished officers from America's wars and recipients of the Medal of Honor. President Harding officiated at the interment ceremonies at the Memorial Amphitheater at Arlington National Cemetery. He conferred upon the unknown soldier the Medal of Honor and the Distinguished Service Cross. Representatives of foreign governments allied with the U.S. in World War I participated as well, bestowing upon the unknown their own highest military awards. The United States reciprocated this gesture, honoring an unknown soldier from nations of France, Great Britain, Belgium, Italy, and Romania with the Medal of Honor. In the history of the Medal of Honor, these are the only five instances in which the award was presented to a foreign soldier. After World War II, plans were made for the selection and burial of an unknown from that war. But fighting in Korea broke out before the selection process had begun. And the decision was made to postpone until a more appropriate time. That time turned out to be 1958, when unknowns from World War II and the Korean War were selected for burial in the Tomb of the Unknowns. The final selection of the unknown from the Korean War took place on May 15, 1958. All of the unknown war dead from that war had been buried in the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific. In that place, four candidates for burial in the Tomb of the Unknowns were placed in identical caskets draped with American flags. Master Sergeant Ned Lyle, a recipient of the Distinguished Service Cross for heroic action in Korea, was designated to make the final selection. He placed a wreath of blue and white carnations on one casket and saluted the remains of the soldier inside. The selection of the World War II unknown took place 11 days later aboard the USS Canberra. Earlier stages of the selection process had resulted in one remaining candidate from the European Theater of Operations and one candidate from the Pacific Theater. Hospital Corpsman First Class William R. Charette, recipient of the Medal of Honor for actions in the Korean War, made the final selection. The selected unknown, along with the unknown from the Korean War, arrived in Washington on May 28, 1958. They lay in state in the Capitol Rotunda until 1 p.m. on May 30th. As the procession moved toward Arlington National Cemetery, the two caissons, each carrying one unknown, traveled side by side. When they reached the cemetery, they shifted into a column led by the caisson bearing the World War II unknown soldier. As the caissons entered the cemetery, 20 jet fighters and bombers passed overhead with one plane missing from each formation. The casket of the World War II unknown soldier was placed in front of President Eisenhower and the Korean War unknown soldier in front of Vice President Nixon. The Marine Band played the national anthem and then a bugler sounded attention three times. After a long moment of silence, President Eisenhower placed a Medal of Honor on each casket. The unknowns of World War II and the Korean War were interred in the plaza beside their World War I comrade. The tomb sarcophagus was placed above the grave of the unknown soldier of World War I in April 1931. The sarcophagus is constructed of seven rectangular pieces of white marble, together weighing 79 tons. On the west panel of the sarcophagus, facing the amphitheater, are the words, Here rests, in honored glory, an American soldier known but to God. On the east panel, facing the Capitol, 
three Greek figures have been sculpted. On the left stands peace, holding a dove in one hand. On the right stands valor, bearing a broken sword in his hands. In the center stands victory, holding hands with peace while extending an olive branch to valor. The north and south panels present a total of six inverted wreaths, each representing a major campaign of World War I. West of the sarcophagus are the crypts of unknowns from World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Those three graves are marked with white marble slabs that lie flush with the plaza. Since April 6, 1948, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier has been guarded 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, regardless of weather. In blazing sun, freezing snow, and even in the face of hurricanes, the Sentinels continue their watch. The Sentinels, members of the 3rd Infantry, or Old Guard, are famous for the precision of their march and changing of the guard. The Sentinel marches 21 steps across a black mat, past the crypts of each unknown. He then makes a crisp 90 degree turn to face east for 21 seconds. He then makes another 90 degree turn facing north for 21 seconds. A crisp shoulder arms movement places the rifle on the shoulder nearest the visitors to signify that the sentinel stands between the tomb and any threat. After that moment, the sentinel paces 21 steps north, turns, and repeats the process. Every hour during the winter and every half hour during summer daylight hours, the sentinels conduct the changing of the guard ceremony. As the new sentinel approaches the relief commander, slowly and with great precision, conducts a white glove inspection of the sentinel's weapon. The two then march to the center of the mat where the active sentinel stops his walk and all three men salute the tomb. The relief commander instructs the active sentinel, pass on your orders. The sentinel replies, post and orders remain as directed. The relieving sentinel responds, orders acknowledged. The relieving sentinel then steps into position at the center of the black mat. The relief commander and relieved sentinel exit and the new sentinel begins his march. The unknown soldiers serve to remind us that not all actions of valor are witnessed and recorded in war. We do not know the stories of these men, but we know mm -hmm. they gave their lives in a war they did not start to protect the freedom of people who would never know their names. They demonstrate the courage and heroism of every man and woman who goes into combat in service of their nation. They will face threats we can hardly imagine in an attempt to eliminate the dangers that are posed to the men in the trench beside them. Wow. That was a great video. That was a great video. Um. I'm really glad I watched that. I'm really, really glad I watched that. You know, I knew, you know, from the comments that I got in my last video what it represented, but seeing the backstory behind it and looking at footage from back then, it makes it so much more real, you know? And I'm really, really glad that I did watch it because one day I do hope to go there. And I think, you know, before I go there, I wanna learn as much as I can about the history and what it really means instead of just going there just you know because it's like a touristy thing to do you know i want to like actually know what it's there for and what it really represents and stuff like that so i'm really glad that i watched this i thought there was only one soldier there and um you know i knew that it represented 
all of the unknown soldiers or all of the pe all of the soldiers that didn't get to come home or not identified but i didn't know there were three three right there are three soldiers in there three unknown soldiers one from world war one one from the korean war and one from world war two right um yeah, that was really interesting. Thank you so much to the person who sent this video to me. And if you have any more information that you want to share with me, definitely leave it down below in the comment section. Again, I learned so much from just the comment section. So um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Mwah.